If you'd like to follow the process of turning a block of wood like this into a guitar like this, then you've come to the right place. And if you would like to see me give this guitar away, click subscribe, hit the bell. Well, it's true, guys. I went back to my very original plan, which was to go with black on the back. Hey, my friends, welcome back to Let's Build a Guitar. Now that Woody's guitar is done, I am going to be kicking it back in gear with these two guitars for Mr. X. Now, I haven't just been putting off working on his guitar. We've been doing a lot of brainstorming and working through and getting supplies together because we're going to do some really unique things with this guitar. Woody's was unique and it, it is. There is no doubt about it. Woody's is a unique guitar, one of a kind. And you know, I'm kind of proud of it. It turned out really beautiful. So guys, I'm just going to give you a little bit of an idea of what we're going to be doing. These guys are having me build them so that they stand out, that they are different than your typical guitar. And in the bands that they play with and the groups, just, you know, think Prince, think Morris Day in the Time, and a little bit of Flash. You know, that's very different than Bruce Springsteen, okay? And guess what? I like both. But Mr. X's guitars, the side dots, are going to be diamonds. He's going to have me put a ruby in one. That guitar is going to be love. And he's going to have me put a sapphire in the other one, blue. And that is going to be hope. Oh, well, we got to figure out what we're going to do here exactly. So we're going to put a big one facing this direction on the 12th fret. Now, I think that one's too small. So we'll look a little bigger here. We're going to be putting this double B, which is black on black. And there is significance to that. And that's that size, which actually it is kind of nice that that fits completely in between the frets totally. That is, that is kind of nice. But it gets a little more fun as we get bigger, huh? So that pretty much, pretty closely fits inside there and that looks that looks nice something like that or the biggest one which would be right there and that actually that actually would look really great and I think I'm gonna go with the big one here I, I really do I think this is the one I'm gonna go with step one is gonna be taking out all the frets. You guys probably saw that I was doing a little bit of texting. One of the really big joys that I get in doing this that I never expected when I started the whole YouTube thing. I am talking with people all over the world and it's just so much fun. And I'm getting to meet people just everywhere and, and I love it. So in fact, I was just talking with Jolan, uh, J-O-L-A-N. He was the number two runner up in 2016 on The Voice UK. So look up Jolan, J-O-L-A-N the voice and uh, check out his purple rain or his version of wishing well and then he's got some other little uh, more acoustic set things that are really really good he is so talented and yeah just been good to meet him via phone anyway and to talk with him that's pretty awesome and then the other thing is i just got a uh a thank you from one of the guys that I built a guitar for. It's it's not this style of guitar at all. In fact, it was more of his own design. Steve, what's up, man? I'm sitting here just uh, playing the old custom, showing you how it's aging. Man, it's been, I don't remember, three, four years? Anyway, dude. <laughs> 
plays wonderfully still. I had it set up um, right before I moved to California in 2021. So I had it set up again by a guy who's really good. And uh, gosh, it plays so great. And I haven't played it in a while, honestly. It's been, in, um, it's been on my stage, but I haven't been playing it lately. But dude, it plays so great. So I just wanted to say hey. Uh, hope you guys are doing well. And as I, I'm sitting here playing it, just thinking about thinking about you. And uh, hope you're doing well, man. And just thanks again, dude. I love this thing. It's awesome. Well, guys, I am I am doing a lot of battling within me right now to decide on what to do here. The this medium size one, this entire thing would fit inside the fret. And it would, because you got to remember, we got a gold fret and a gold fret coming through here. Uh, they're right there. There's one. Here's the other. This one, it cut it up a little bit, which I suppose I could do. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. So let me update you on this. I pretty much got it all totally polished. And then I was looking at it and I just wasn't really quite satisfied with the way that I had the burst on there. There was a part of it that I kind of liked, but then there were some dark streaks in the wood that I just didn't care for. And I don't know if it was frustration or if I was just like, nah, but I went ahead and I just painted it yellow, the whole thing, except the back. I still think the back looked pretty decent. So I'm going to leave the back with the burst on it and the front is just going to be a solid yellow. I should know who this is going to at least by next week. We'll find out. Uh, my Patreons are making the decision. I'm going to be giving this away uh, which is going to be fun to do. So just got a few things that I got to finish up on this yet as well. I am going to go with the bigger of them. I like the looks of that better. I think it's going to be, hopefully it's going to be just fine. Uh, so next step now then is to break this down into smaller bits. Pretty important for me to get my center line marked in so that I can get my inlays where they need to be. I should be able to get both pieces out of this one piece and not waste a bunch of nice pearl inlay. Because these are going to end up being sanded down, I can make whatever mess I want on the top. So I think I'm going to just, I'm going to actually glue these pieces of paper onto that so I've got my pattern to cut out. This is a spray adhesive, just kind of a tack glue that you can get at most, you know, like Michael's or Hobby Lobby, that type of place. I use this for the uh, felt that's inside the guitar cases when I do that. But I'm just going to spray a little on here. And I'm going to use that to tack this on. I just use a jeweler saw. It's like a coping saw, but the blade is much, much smaller. In fact, I've got a whole bag here of different size blades. I'm using a really small blade on this one right now, if you can see that. These aren't all that expensive. You can just, you know, get them off Amazon, YouTube. And then mine came with this whole uh, little cutting board, so I can just uh, work along, work along and get it cut out. All right, when, uh, when I cut off a little piece like this, uh, don't get rid of those, because even though that's just a little piece, that's, that's a big piece in some cases, uh, might be exactly what you need for a couple little cutout pieces. One of the certainties of working with these fine blades is you will break them. Um, hey, very quick little tip. Don't think that you need to throw the whole thing away. I've still got plenty of blade to work with there yet, so 
you know, I'm sure most people are going to think of this, but hey, if you're a novice and you don't know or don't realize, these just shorten up and tighten it down, tighten this end, and now you've got just a shorter blade. But, you know, I only use a little bit of that blade anyway. You probably all know that already, but hey, there might be somebody that just doesn't realize, oh yeah, I guess I can still use the blade. Take a good look at that. If you look at it close, you can see that there's a three-dimensional aspect to it. What I've been trying to work out is making that three-dimensional aspect to come out in a in just a flat inlay, which is two-dimensional, uh, without having the coloring changes. It just it doesn't look near the same. Now this would need a lot of work done to it yet to make it look right. So don't think that this was like, oh, here's my final product, because it wouldn't be. I'd have to do lots and lots of sanding and work to get this anywhere close, but it's kind of laughable right now. Check this out, the, the flatness. Now this is a smaller size than what that one was, but still the point being is that without the three-dimensional aspect and just using the outlines of this, it doesn't have near the effect. This has like a peak here and a peak in here, and it looks like it's glistening in different directions there and stuff. So not that this would be my favorite way to do it, but in order to get it to look like this, either I would have to spend hundreds of hours, well, maybe not hundreds, tens of hours, I don't know, it might, it would take a long time to put light pieces and dark pieces and light pieces and get them blended so that they've got that three-dimensional look. I cannot imagine how many hours I would need to put into that to make that look right. And I thought I would give it a try just seeing if this were two-dimensional look, just flat on pearl, how it would look. And uh, even though it's not finished, I can already see that I'm, I wouldn't like that. These X Horizons of mine are based off of Prince's Cloud Guitar. Most of you know that. Uh, and just to give credit, Dave Roussan built the originals. I got permission from him to build what I'm building, so just put that aside. I've, I say that a lot just because new people watch the videos and they don't know that I've got that permission and I've... I'm doing my own thing. It's my own design, doing a semi-hollow body. When he went to the symbol on his fretboards, uh, those are actually like a decal, or like a transfer that's been put on there. So when you see those, those are not actual inlays. Those are, you spray the fretboard, you put on the decal, and you put clear coat over top of those decals. As far as durability goes, there's, no difference um, because you've got the clear coat over top of it and you're not digging in there. As far as the looks go, if I want this to look as sweet as this actually looks, I'm really coming to the decision that I think I need to go with a quality decal. They're not cheap though either. They cost me more than what the inlays would cost, but the inlays take a lot more man hours to actually make so your overall ending product obviously would cost much much more because of the number of hours that I would have to put into those um, I don't think I'm ready for that part of me feels a little bit like you know it's a failure to to, to not get it the way I want it and, and I mean I'm doing a decent job cutting them out in the flat two-dimensional version, but they just don't look right without that three-dimensional look. So I thought I'd try, and uh, as I've been doing over the last year and a half, as I show you my victories and I show you my failures and I show you my, I guess I'm learning a lesson. So maybe I'm learning a lesson, but it does take away from the artistry a little bit, doesn't it? Have I failed? 
and I guess, you know, before I close out here, one thing I accomplished today <laughs> was getting the neck and this body brought together for my telly. Just my personal one. Uh, work on it, experimenting, trying different things with this one that I wouldn't do on a customer's guitar for sure. Looking forward to getting this put together real soon. So anyway, that's it. Hey guys, keep fighting for joy. We'll see you next time.